this is lecture 12 on network theory in this lecture i am going to do a brief summary on what we have seen up to now right so in lecture 1 to lecture 11 we have seen different different concepts that is in the first first lecture we have seen the basic concepts of charge current energy and voltage so next one current flow through the conductor next we have seen classification of elements and classification of sources right next you have seen each passive element that is what is the resistance and what is the ohms law in resistance what is the power and energy similarly what is the ohms law in inductance and power and energy similarly capacitance so what is the capacitance right how it will be storing the energy in form of electric field this inductor will be storing the uh, energy in the form of magnetic field right and uh, we have seen also energy and power in capacitor next uh, two important uh, laws kirchhoff laws we have seen that is kcl and kvl kirchhoff current law and kirchhoff voltage law next one is source transformation and substitution theorem right so some uh, basic uh, transformation theorems are there suppose this is a voltage source and it can be converted into current source if it is having a series resistance similarly current source with parallel resistance can be represented by voltage substitution theorem means if you are having voltage with respect to some parallel resistance something like this then it can be replaced by simple voltage source right so that is like substitution theorem next we have seen equivalent capacitance if series capacitance is there if two capacitances are in series what is the equivalent similarly parallel capacitance again inductance series as well as parallel resistance also we have seen series and parallel next we have seen voltage division rule and current division rule right so voltage division rule can be applied when two three resistances are in series and one voltage source is given similarly current division current division will be done in parallelly right if a current source is here then two or three resistances are in parallel then we can apply current division rule right then the very important concept mesh analysis and nodal analysis right so how to find the mesh currents or how to find some currents in any circuit given similarly nodal analysis how to find some node voltages right by applying kcl and here we are by applying kvl right now see we have up to now only approximately 11 lectures in the 11 lectures uh, some problems are there some uh, lecture 8 and something right so we have learned so many concepts but what you need to people do is we have to revise one more time right so it is not about how many concepts you have learned but how, how much effectively you learn right suppose by without seeing the formulas or without seeing the concept so you, you should do the you should able to do the form uh, problems right so if you take any uh, test book problem so you have to do that problem right so that is effect we need so i don't know how many are following and how many are doing the same thing right but you have to do it's not like about if you learn very quick so learning quick then you will forget quickly also right forget quickly right so that's why i'm uh, keep on telling we will go very slow and uh, learning the concept very clearly right so that is my intention so go slow and do as much yeah, as many problems you can do right because when you do the problem then only the concept will be remembered right so that is about this one next one so we have completed the mesh and nodal analysis right so what is the comparison we have to do because when we need to apply the nodal or mesh analysis so that we will do by this problem but before that 95 to 199 right 95 to 99 percent of all circuits can be uh, solved by nodal analysis because it's very easy to solve so but when we go to mesh analysis so we'll get more number of equations to solve but here nodal equations will get less number of equations so five percent right we have to go with the mesh analysis where we cannot apply the nodal analysis suppose 
some current source or some voltage source are given across any branch where we cannot apply nodal analysis that is called super node concept we have seen right sometimes we can go for this mesh analysis but maximum we can do this so all problems using nodal analysis now why we need to, i mean why the important me is so we can get quickly the responses that will be done by this example so which one is very simple right now we need to find i1 and i2 so this is the one mesh and this is one mesh so if i write a kvl across these two loops so when i start with in this loop this is the dominant so it is minus and we have to give the polarities here because it is entering into the resistance similarly the polarities will be like this anyway here polarities are given now if i start here it will be minus 4 plus 4 i1 plus 2 into this branch is containing this current as well as this current but in this means this is a dominant so this opposite i can take as minus so i1 minus i2 and this is a plus it is touching so plus 1 is equal to 0 if i rearrange 4 i1 plus 2 i1 it will become 6 i1 minus 2 i2 minus 4 plus 1 so minus 3 it is going that side means 3 equation 1 this is by applying KVL, but you can go directly also. How? See, this I1 is going in this branch, so it is touching with the 4 ohm and 2 ohm. So I can write directly the 4 plus 2, 6 ohm, direct, 6 I directly. Right? Now, this see this current direction, it is opposite. So this will become minus 2 I2 directly. Now, there are two voltage sources. So one is touching with the minus and one is touching with the plus. So 4 minus 1, 3 then that is going that side 3 right so you can di write, directly write this cable expression by seeing this loop also in the exam right it's not required in the exam how we are doing right if you know the concept you can directly apply the kvl so what are the resistances we is touching so 4 plus 2 6 and this 2 ohm, uh, amp ohms so there is a current which is opposite direction of i1 so directly minus 2 i2 so two voltage sources are there so it is touching with the minus but it is touching with the plus so it will be uh, take difference so but it is minus so if i hear minus means they they are going that side plus will become so three <coughs> now similarly i can write this directly see now first to give the polarities that means this i2 is going through this two two plus two so directly four i2 right then if you see this 2 ohm so it will be i1 will be there i2 will be there so i2 we have already taken so for i1 we have to take the opposite side because it is opposite direction of i2 so simply minus 2 i1 is equal to again there are two voltage sources so one is plus 3 volt and this is minus 1 so 3 minus 1 is 2 but here plus will come but here directly minus 2 that's it so directly we can write right or we have to go through the procedure that is if you are touching with 2 so 2 i1 sorry 2 i2 plus 3 minus 1 and if it is touching like this 2 into this is a dominant so i2 minus i1 is equal to 0 so 2 i2 2 i2 4 i2 minus 1 into 2 minus 2 i1 plus is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2 if, it is, that is, if it is, this is going that side so it will become minus 2 this is the equation 2 and now to solve this 2 see there is even all so we can uh, divide with 2 so minus i1 plus 2 i2 is equal to minus 1 right this is equation 2 by solving equation 1 and 2 suppose this is 6 i1 minus 2 i2 is equal to 3 this is 1 if you see this will be cancelled so 6 i1 minus 1 i y 1 is equal to 3 minus 1 2 so i 1 is equal to 2 by 5 ampere or we can say 0.4 ampere right this is how we solve so once we know i 1 we can find i 2 so minus 2 into 2 by 4 from equation 2 plus or 4 i 2 is equal to minus 2 so 4 i 2 is equal to minus 4 by 5 is going that side so minus 2 plus 4 by 5 minus 10 plus 4 by 5 minus 6 by 5 this is 4 i 2 so what is i 2 
so two twos two threes so minus three by ten amperes so this is i1 and this is i2 now this is by mesh analysis next we will see the same problem with the nodal analysis so we need to find i1 and i2 right if the nodal analysis when i start so first i have to represent the reference node which is here now if i observe so this is the only single node so if i denote this node voltage as v so we can apply kcl in this node right always assume that all are leaving current now what is this current the difference between these two voltages that is v minus <coughs> right here v minus 4 by 4 plus v minus 1 by 2 in this branch v minus 1 because this is plus plus v minus 3 by 2 is equal to 0 if i take v common so 1 by 4 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 1 is equal to minus 4 so 1 minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 plus 3 by 2 so 1 by 2 plus 3 by 2, 1 by 2 only so it will become 3 this is 5 by 4 or we can say v is equal to 12 by 5 volts right so only single equation we need to solve in the nodal analysis but in the mesh analysis we have to solve two equations now once i know the voltage so i can find the current now if you see the current direction it is like this so it is the i1 and this is the current direction i2 so this is i2 now <coughs> to find i1 this is the source voltage so for 4 so i1 is equal to 4 minus v so v we got 12 by 5 by the resistance 4 so what is this 20 minus 12 by 20 so it is nothing but 8 by 20 right or 4 by 10 or 0.4 ampere right this is i1 now similarly what is i2 i2 direction is like this so this is the dominant voltage so v minus 3 by 2 so what is v 12 by 12 by 5 minus 3 by 2 so what is this 12 minus 15 by 10 or minus 3 by 10 amperes or minus 0.3 ampere so this is we got very quickly the i1 and i2 but so we have to uh, verify the i mean the values are correct or correct. <coughs> see so i1 we got 0.4 ampere i2 we got minus 3 by 10 or we can say minus 0.3 ampere so that is the reason the nodal analysis will be very quickly give the responses so 95 percent of the numericals we can apply the nodal analysis but you can verify so using mesh analysis what is the difficulty by solving this equation what is the uh, easy when we do the nodal analysis right so this is about the comparison between mesh and nodal analysis right